this video, I am going to review the clearance analysis tool within OCalc Pro in terms of the steps that are required to generate a clearance analysis report and to determine whether or not there are any clearance violations on a poll that's being modeled. This essentially is a four-step process, and this video covers step one of that process, which is creating rules. A clearance analysis report can't be generated until the rules file has been created and the parameters of each rule have been established. So here I have a poll that's already built and loaded, which we're going to use to determine whether or not there are any violations here. So as I said, the first step is going to be to create a rules file. This can be done by navigating to the Tools drop-down and selecting Clearance Analysis, Edit Clearance Rules. This opens up our Clearance Rules Editor, which allows us to create rules, create clearance groups, and also create structure, services, and foliage. Beginning with Clearance Groups, this section determines what items fall into each group. For example, if I were to select Clearance Groups and select Add, it generates a new clearance group, which I can give a name. I'm going to name this group Power. And then I can give it a description if I want, so I might call this Primary, Secondary, and Neutral. And then you can also set a position if you wish. Typically, these are going to be the highest items on the poll. And then I would also want to create maybe a additional group. And I can call this one communication. And for the description here, I might do something like fiber, CATV, and telecommunication spans. And I might say that typically these items are the lowest items. Now the reason we're creating these clearance groups is that you need to have a clearance group to create a rule. So that way you're telling the program what groups shouldn't be a certain distance from other groups. So now that we have two groups to work with, I'm also going to create a surface. Um, if you're not going to worry too much about structures and foliage, you should at the very least create a surface. And the surface that I'm going to create, I'm going to call the ground. In order to determine whether or not something is violating a ground clearance rule, it's essential to have a ground surface to put in. So I can also change its color. I'm going to go ahead and change it to brown since it's the ground. I'm not going to bother with a description. The name is pretty straightforward. So once I've got my ground and two of my groups, I can now create a rule. So once I select rules and violations, I can hit this add button and it will begin generating a rule. Now I'm going to create a ground clearance rule. And I'm going to say that there has to be at least a distance of 18 feet between my targets. My targets I could select by clicking this ellipse button and I get this window here. So I'm going to say that my power and communication, my upper targets, have to be at least this 18 feet above the ground. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to give this rule a name. I'm going to just call this one Ground Clearance Rule. And for the description, I'll put in minimum height above ground line. And as far as severity, I will mark this as a high severity violation. An additional rule that I can add if I select Rules and Violations and select Add here. I will set this up to be the minimum distance between my power and communication spans. Let's say, for argument's sake, that there has to be a minimum of 4 feet between 
my power and my communication. So I will say that my power is going to be my upper and communication is going to be my lower. So I'm going to hit OK. And I will call this my power clearance rule. Well, to be more descriptive, I can call it my power to com clearance rule. And I'm going to set the severity at critical, because you do have to make sure that there is a certain distance in most cases between all of your power and all of your communication spans. So now I've got two rules created, I've got a surface created. So you can continue to add to this sort of rules file as many different rules as you want. You can also be more specific with your clearance groups by maybe instead of using power, set up a group for primary, secondary, and neutral, if you need to have certain distances between each of those items. And you can also expand on your communication spans to have separate groups for fiber, CATV, and telecommunication spans. You are not going to add items like guy wires. Those aren't included in running the tool. But once you've finished adding however many clearance groups and however many rules you want to add, you can just do a file save. Oh, looks like I forgot to set a default surface. So I'm going to select my ground and set this as my default surface. So now I should be able to save. My clearance rules are saved. And if I want to just view a summary of those rules, I can go into File and do Show Clearance Rules. And I get this screen here, which tells me a little bit about my groups, about my surfaces, and about my different rules. So once I'm done here, I can close this window. And then you can proceed to step two, which is going to be assigning those clearance groups to different items. But that concludes this video.